All right, then welcome back everyone. Let's solve this question and make it increasing. So I hope you've read the question once. Uh, this is again a classical greedy problem where uh, since again it's a div 3b question, right? So you have to think about the dumbest possible solution and more often than not that will be the answer. Okay, so I hope you read the question once but I'll quickly read it for you. So basically you are just given an array uh, of n integers even till an and you have one operation at your disposal. Basically divide an array element by 2 and round down. Basically divide an array element by 2 and replace it with basically replace ai with ai by 2 and this is floor, right? ai by 2's floor. Replace ai with ai by 2's floor. And what is our end goal? Make the array strictly increasing. Okay, so perform this operation that is replace an element by uh, dividing it by 2 and rounding off, rounding off, rounding down, okay, not rounding up, it is not seed, okay. So the operation at our disposal is uh, round down, basically divide by 2 and round down that value. And what we want is in the end we want to achieve that the error becomes strictly increasing, okay. So perform this operation of dividing the error element by 2 and, and, and convert the error to strictly increasing fashion. Now what they are asking is can you do it, if you can do it then print the minimum number of operations otherwise print minus 1. Okay, so that's what they have done and they are given some test cases here. So, fine, so the operations, uh, we only have one operation at our disposal, right? So, divide an array element by 2. Okay, and we want the array to be, uh, it is important to note here, strictly increasing. Okay, it's not just non-decreasing. So, even less than equals to a2, less than equal to a3, no, it's not good. We want it to be strictly increasing. That is important. Okay, so let us quickly go to sublime and try to make sense out of this question. So basically, if n equals to 5, we want to achieve this. Even less than a2, less than a3, less than a4, less than a5. This is what we want to achieve. So, this is a div 3 question, b question, so div 3b and uh, div 2a are somewhat similar only, uh, the difficulty level stays almost same there. So, this will be, there will be a very simple logic for this question, so let's try to make some simple observations, right? So, let's say, uh, I'll first uh, copy the test cases here, so maybe we can anal analyze them. So, what do you want to do is, um, we want to achieve this, even less than a2, less than a3, less than a4, less than a5, okay, fine. So, uh, what can be the simplest thing that come to your mind? Maybe I can go from left to right and try to make sure that this inequality is followed. Okay, maybe you try to think like that. I'll go from left to right and try to make this inequality being followed. Right, so maybe uh, let's say you have an array like this. Uh, like this, 10, 2, uh, 4, something like this, okay. So you might uh, say that, uh, I'll start from left to right, okay. So right now, even is not less than a2. So what I'll do is, to make this even less than a2, I'll uh, maybe this is not a good example, maybe I can take it, okay. So, to make even less than a2, maybe I'll just change this even and divide it by 2. So, I'll make it 5, 8, 4, and 7. So, you see here, uh, by just dividing 10 by 2, by applying one operation, you were able to satisfy this inequality, even less than a2, okay. But you are not able, to, like, you are able to satisfy even less than a2, but even is still not less than a3, right. Even is still not less than a3. Uh, maybe if this 7 was here 3, even is not even less than this last guy, a4. Right, so it gives you idea that going from left to right uh, is not a good idea, right? So going from left to right may not be a good idea, right? Uh, why it may not be a good idea? Because satisfying one inequality uh, doesn't solve, doesn't make sure that all the inequalities going forward are followed, right? So here you can see by converting 10 to 5, you are able to satisfy this inequality, fine, between first and second guy. But these guys were still, uh, like I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about whether these inequalities will be followed or not. So going from left to right uh, may not be a good idea here, right? So let's try to go from uh, right to left. Let's see if that can be worked. So basically, first making sure this inequality is followed, then uh, making sure this inequality is followed. So does this work, first of all? Let's just see if it works. Let's just take the same example here, 10, 8, 4, 7. Okay, so is a a4 greater, th is a4 less than a5? Yeah, fine, it is, no issues, uh, no issues. So we can keep it as it is, no here. So is a uh, 8 less than 4? 8 is not less than 4. It is definitely not less than 4. So maybe I have to convert it like this. 10 divided by 2, 4, 4, 7. Okay, one operation is consumed here. But still, uh, 4 is not less than 4, right? So maybe I have to convert more, one, one more operation. 2, 4, 7. Yeah, so after two operations, it seems as if A2 is less than A3. A2 is less than A3. And you see here, uh, we didn't need to worry about the other guys here, right? So 2 is also less than 7. 2 is also less than 7. Okay, now we move ahead. Is even less than A2? No. So we might have to reduce it. 5, 2, 4, 7. So third operation performed here. Okay, now is 5 less than 2? No. So we have to perform one more operation. 2, 2, 4, 7. Fourth operation. Is 2 less than 2? No. We have to perform one more operation. So 1, 2, 4, 7. Yeah, 5 operation. Okay, so going from right to left uh, is making sense. But will it always work? Is my question to you. Will it always work? Is my question to you. Think about it. Uh, let's say, uh, in the worst case, what can happen is uh, you can get an array in completely decreasing fashion, right? You can have an array like this. In the worst case, what can happen? Think about the worst possible case. What can happen? Someone can give you an array like this. Instead of increasing, someone can give you a strictly decreasing array, right? So maybe something like this, 10, 9, 8, 7. 10, 9, 8, 7. So first you will try to satisfy this inequality. 
right? So first you will try to satisfy this inequality. So basically what you will do is you will try to make uh, a4 less than a5, a4 less than a5, okay? So you will try to do that. So okay, let's try to do it. So you will divide it by 4, so 8 by 2, so it will become 4, 7, yeah fine, this inequality is followed, okay? Now since this guy is strictly decreasing, uh, sorry, yeah, strictly decreasing, so if you reduce this guy, uh, reduce this guy, still the strict decreasing, the strictly decreasing order is still there, right? Uh, okay, guys, so what I'm saying is, uh, this was strictly decreasing array, right? So even if you decrease it further, the strictly decreasing part, the property is still maintained, right? So now we want to change the a3 and a4. So yeah, of course we'll divide 9 by 2. So 9 by 2 is what? 4. I'm just rounding down, okay? I'm rounding down. Okay? Still not there, right? Still not there. So maybe I have to reduce it further. So 2, 4, 7. Okay? 2, 4, 7. So now it is followed. Now strictly decreasing property is followed. Okay? So now we have 10, 2, 4, 7. So now you can of course reduce it 10 maybe 3 times. Like similar to this, similar to this. So you're saying what is happening here is if I come from right to left and try making sure that the property is satisfied, if I make sure that a4 is less than a5, a4 is less than a5, even if here uh, a3 was not less than a4, what I'll do is I'll just try to reduce a3. I'll try to reduce a3, right? I'll try to reduce a3 and make a3 less than a4. Since a4 is less than a5, a3 is by default less than a5. Okay, see, guys, what I'm saying is if I try to satisfy this property first, so I'm making sure that a4 is less than a5. Now, if this property is not satisfied, I'll try to make sure a3 is less than a4. When it's inside, no, a4 is less than a5, a3 is by default less than a5. Similarly, if a2 is not less than a3, I'll try to make it less than a3. Now a2 is less than a3. This a3 was anyway less than a4, and a4 anyway less than a5. So a2 is by default less than all of these. So the point of all this is, the point of all this is, you can come from, the key observation is, go from right to left, make sure the property is satisfied. Okay, make sure the property is satisfied. Now, when can, we, when can you be sure that uh, you cannot convert this array to strictly increasing fashion? You cannot convert an array to strictly increasing fashion. Uh, let's see, uh, let's just see example from code forces itself. Uh, I guess the second example here, right? So 5, 3, 2, 1. Let's see, 5, 3, 2, 1. What is the issue there? And uh, so first things first, we made this observation going from right to, right to left makes sense. Make sure the property is satisfied. Now let's see uh, when minus 1 comes. Okay. So first things first, you'll try to satisfy a4 less than a5, right? So you'll convert this 2, 2. So you keep it like 5, 3, 1, 1. Now you convert this 5, 3, 0, 1. This is satisfied. Now, no matter how much you try, uh, you cannot go beyond 0, right? So you divide 3 by 2, 3 by 2, it becomes 1, it again becomes 0. So no matter how hard you try, no matter how hard you try, uh, you won't be able to satisfy the inequality a2 less than a3. Right? In the end, because we want this, right? Even less than a2, less than a3, so on till a5. So no matter how hard you try, you won't be able to do it. So basically what it says is, uh, Whenever an element, so basically the pairs that we are checking is, first we have to make sure a5 is less than a4, then you have to make sure a4 is less than a3, then you have to make sure a3 is less than a2, then you have to make sure a2 is less than a1. So if at any point, by checking this adjacent pairs, we figure out that some element has become zero, then uh, you cannot do it, right? So see guys, what we are doing is, we are checking. First make sure a5 is less than a4, sorry, a4 is less than a5, then make sure a3 is less than a4, then make sure a2 is less than a3, then make sure a1 is less than a2. If at some point, I figure out that some value has automatically become zero, for example, this a2 has become zero, then definitely I cannot change this a1 to some value less than 0 because the smallest value that you can get is 0, right? So these are the two key observations. So uh, during checking, during checking, if some value has become 0, then not possible, then not possible, fine? So I'll repeat myself again. So first we try to go from left to right and try to make sure this property equality is satisfied. But it turns out like if I make this equality inequality satisfied going from left to right, I'm not sure. Even if I make sure a1 is less than a2, I'm not sure if a1 is less than a3 or a1 is less than a4 or a1 a5. Okay, so I thought maybe let's go from right to left. By going from right to left, I'm able to make sure that if a4 is less than a5, a4 is less than a5, and if I make sure a3 is less than a4, a3 is by default less than a5. Right? Similarly, if I make sure a2 is less than a3, a2 will be less than a4, a2 will be less than a5. Right? So going from right to left made sense to me. So that's a greedy, right? We are being greedy here. <laughs> Fine. And when do you think answer won't exist? While processing the pairs, while processing the pairs, if some element became zero, if some element becomes zero, then also it's not possible, right? So that's a clear cut observation here. Now, let's just quickly solve it then. <laughs> let's quickly code it up so that you can completely get the intuition in your head. So I guess intuition also, like the proof is also simple, right? So yeah, cool. So I've taken the area input here. Now we have to check all the adjacent pairs, right? So a5, a4, uh, a4, a3, a3, a2. So I have to come from the last, right? So for int i equals to n minus one, i greater than zero because I'm taking zero based indexing, right? So these two, these two, these two. So i greater than zero. And then uh, i plus plus, i plus plus. So what I'll have to do is uh, maybe I can initialize the operations here. 
int operations equals to zero. So initially zero operations. So if area is strictly increasing anyway, you don't need to do any operation, right? So if you already have array like this, one, two, three, four, you don't need to do any operation, right? Cool. So what I can do is um while area of uh, area of i area of i is uh, less than equals to area of i minus one because we want area of i to be greater, right? So if area of i is less than equals to area of i minus one. What you can do is you can uh, make sure that area of i minus one gets divided by two, and you can increment the operations. Okay. And one more thing you have to take care is area of i minus one is greater than zero. You cannot go <laughs> beyond zero. Right. So yeah, fine. So while area of, area of i minus one is greater than zero and area of i is less than equals to area of i minus one. So until this condition is not satisfied, that is area of i minus one doesn't become less than area of i minus one doesn't become less than area of i. I'm gonna keep on decrementing. I'm gonna dividing di keep on dividing area of i minus one by two and increment the operations. Okay. Fine. And uh, what next? If area of i has become zero. If area of i has become zero, then basically what happened is you check this, you check this when you came here, or maybe at some part here, you came here and this guy was zero. If this guy is zero, this guy is zero, definitely, uh, definitely the inequality won't be satisfied here. The inequality won't be satisfied here because I guess the area elements are positive only. If you see here, the area elements are non negative only. So if some point you achieved zero, definitely uh, you cannot make sure the area can be strictly increasing. Okay? So if area, area of i has become zero, you will have to print minus one and return. So return means uh, return out of this, okay, return out of this solve function, okay, fine. So I'm showing you the solve function again, again, because I've changed the template a little bit. We used to generally use the Boolean variable, right? But uh, so now since we are into difficult questions, I'm changing, I'm trying to simplify the code as much as possible. Okay, fine. So the question is simple, right? So while area of i minus one is greater than zero and area of i is less than equals to area of i minus one. So until the inequality is not followed, until the inequality is um, not followed, decrease area of i minus one, and increment the operations. But at some point, while checking the adjacent pairs, adjacent pairs, you found out the sum elements become zero, you definitely won't be able to follow the property. You definitely won't be able to follow the property because the error elements are non-negative. And if some element has become already zero, you definitely won't be able to satisfy this property here. Okay, fine. So that's that. Let me just quickly uh, output the operations for the new line. Okay, so there's a stupid mistake I've done here. <laughs> this should be i minus minus, right? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me just quickly run it again. Okay, two minus one, zero, zero, four, one, eleven. Two minus one, zero, zero, four, eleven. Zero. Okay. So I, I hope it works. Uh, let me just quickly submit it. It works. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.